Welcome back, Southwest Florida. We're continuing to document this real conference. You saw the crowd that was here today to witness the, the eloquent words of the great Reverend Youngblood out of uh, New York City area and, uh, and around the, the world, for that matter. Uh, we got a, we got the pleasure and the opportunity here to uh, have a quick conversation with him right here on Leap His Live. Uh, first of all, I'd like to personally welcome you to uh, the Southwest Florida area and. Uh, and thank you for the for that great message you had this morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here here, if for nothing more than the weather right now. But it's a pleasure being here, especially at this symposium. Rem Youngblood, uh, your message is uh, was was wide range, but certainly focused on um, black men and and being positive and and embracing and taking taking care of their community and gaining respect from the black women and, and the whole bit that leads us to a, a growing and better community. Uh, first of all, how did you first, be, you know, find that message as something that was very important to you? I found that message important to me and others when I realized that I was early on in my ministry uh, experiencing all of the desired successes and I had a congregation loaded with women and I'm grateful for that also I was doing some other things but then one day I had to notice the absence of African-American males and in my noticing that I began to work and wonder why and I've gotten some marvelous results so I try to tell everybody that black men are like an undeveloped country you know that's the greatest potential now for everything and I think that that is in the will of God that black men rise up. I think Lazarus should be our patron saint. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that there is a fear of that happening because throughout history, I think there has been a, 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 a strategic effort to undermine and to keep down African-American males. Now let's take this to another level here. Now, now, you are not bashful about identifying race. You're not bashful about targeting a specific area like a laser beam, zeroing right in on black men yes. and not being apologetic about it. Give me your thought process. Well, first of all, I quoted today Francis Cress Welsing, who said that racism, if you don't understand what it is and how it works, everything else you think you understand will only serve to confuse you. Racism is alive and well in our country right now, and it is most evident in the way they are treating our president, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama. Nobody in this nation has ever seen a president mistreated the way the senators of this country are mistreating our president. And I don't care what nobody says. It's all based on race. The man knows his way around. He is eloquent. He knows his stuff. And look at how they treat him. When they make a determination that no matter what he puts forth, they're going to be against it. Why? So are you saying that? America has come to the point that they've elected a black man as president and that racism still exists in America? It is a lie. But you got well, we got a black president. Yeah, but we uh, got Colin Powell, we got Oprah Winfrey, we got Michael Joy, we got LeBron James. Yeah, that's what white people tend to use or toward us or against us, but they're talking about single individuals. When you look at the stats in terms of prison, um, that's all strategic. And so when we can start doing something more in terms of the populace of black people and Latinos as well, then we will start to make progress in America. What do you have to say to those people that said, there goes Reverend Young Blood and the rest of them still blaming the white man? You're right. <laughs> Rum Youngblood, let's get back to the uh, real symbolic. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're not going to edit any of this. Uh, uh, real. Um, when um, um, when uh, Bob Beeman first presented that to us as a committed concept, and uh, we embraced the concept, he constantly talked about you and your work with uh, Real Program, I think, in New York. Uh, tell us some of the results that have come as a result of people coming together like they have today in, 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 your, in your neck of the woods? In my neck of the woods, we've been privileged to rebuild communities. We've been privileged 
to give more opportunities to our children in terms of better schools. Uh, we've encountered some enemies we didn't even know existed. But what's even more important is we have had our programs emulated by people who could afford to do it and people who sat in positions of power. So they were bereft of ideas for us when we were in a certain predicament, but then they took our ideas and implemented it for themselves and in many instances have cut us out. Uh -huh. And one of the ways they've done that is they've given a new definition now to affordable housing. When we did affordable housing, it was affordable to those who were being left out, the middle class. Now they've taken affordable housing and affordable housing is no longer affordable to the middle class because there is no more middle class. So it's an interesting kind of dynamic. Okay, you look into that camera, Reverend uh, Youngblood, and you got at least a million people who watch our show every Sunday morning. And I want to allow you to lead them with some final comments, and I'm going to do something I've never done. I'm going to hand you the microphone, I'm going to step away, and I'm going to let you talk for five minutes, talk to the people. Thank you, Brother Lee, for this opportunity. All I would say is to the people of America, this is a country that is yet laden with promise and iridescent possibilities. We have seen some marvelous progress, but it has not been on a large enough scale. Uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere are the words of Dr. Martin Luther King. He died being a critical lover of this country and he is without a doubt one of our heroes and should be recognized as such. Everybody knows that were it not for Martin King, very likely Mr. Barack Hussein Obama would not be where he is. And inevitably, we must recognize the historic fact that there are people who are against this kind of progress. And some of the idiocy, and you can't call it anything other than that, that we have seen coming from people of power, people of finance, people of position, has just been very disenchanting in terms of what our young people have seen in America. I said one time at a funeral, at the funeral of a young man, 15 years of age, killed in Brooklyn, when uh, the then mayor said that this young man was in heaven with God. And it scared me to death that this young man was in heaven with God because then I wanted to know what was he telling God on us grown-ups in terms of the atmosphere that we have created and not created that he and others could feel safe. And that is from guns to a proper and quality education, you know, as well as something other than the prison industrial complex. God bless America, and I mean that in the sense of turning this thing around from where some people have it headed. Thank you. I know you people out there on Leap His Live said, I can't believe Lee let the microphone go. He's never done that in 22 years. <laughs> Rev. Young Blood, that shows you how much respect I have for you and the message that you have to deliver. Thanks for joining us on Leap His Live. And, uh, I'm going to let you go now so you can work your way around to see this booth for some posts. Just know, Lee, that you also violated the, the policy of the pulpit because we're told never let the mic go. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>